Chapter fifteen, question number fourteen. This is a conceptual question. For the chemical reaction shown below, here there is a chemical reaction. Which change conditions made to the system at chemical equilibrium will result in a net direction to the right to form more product? So here you have. Carbon as a solid, so you can ignore that. You know, by adding or removing carbon solid, it would not affect chemical equilibrium. Hydrogen is a gas. Hydrogen is a gas. Methane is a gas. So you can manipulate those two terms. Okay, so let's check the conditions. A decreasing the concentration. Okay, so at this time, if you try to decrease the concentration of hydrogen, the chemical reaction will shift from right to left. Okay, so basically, it's going this way. If you removing decreasing the concentration for B, increasing concentration of methane. If you increase the concentration, it's the same thing. The chemical reaction will shift from right to left. Based on the Chantilly's principle, they will try to remove the extra you added to the system, and then C adding more carbon. We said it's a solid; it won't affect the equilibrium by either adding or removing. And then D increasing the concentration of hydrogen. If you increase the concentration of hydrogen, this lever is going to move. To the right hand side, you are going to produce more methane. So the correct answer has to be D. Okay. So for question number fifteen, for this reaction, A gas, B gas, and then C is also gas. So all of the three component are gases. Kc value is given to you. Okay. Which of the following statement is true? Okay, let's see. So for A, the concentration of the product is greater than the concentration of the reactant. Okay, so they ask us to compare concentrations. So we have to check this Kc values. This Kc value equals to one multiplied to ten to the power negative ten. It is very very small. Okay, it is very very small. In that case, the if you write Kc is the product basically C to the power C concentration to the power two divided by A concentration multiply B concentration to the power two. Okay, so if this Kc is very very small, that means the denominator is very very small. If the denominator is very very small. That means the reactant concentration is very small, okay. So here,、uh, the reaction B, the reaction is favored in the reverse direction. So the chemical reaction is going to shift from right to left in order to produce more reactant. At this time, we don't know the concentration values. We don't know the concentration values. Okay, just you know, compare in comparison between product and concent product concentration and the reactant concentration. You know, we know、uh, the chemical reaction is favored to the other side, to the reverse side. So in this case, it's B. Okay, and then for C, the Kp values is greater. Kp and Kc, you have to do calculations. Based on these delta n values, if you check delta n values for this particular case, is two on the product side. Is two on the product side minus three. This is one. This is two minus three. So delta n equals to negative one. Delta n equals to negative one. Okay. So you can check lecture notes for this particular case. They ask you to consider the chemical reaction directions. So the most Proper one is B. Let's check number sixteen. D 
the etherification of acetic acid and ethanol. This is your acetic acid. This is your ethanol. Is given by the reaction below. One one mole of ethanol is mixed with two moles of acid. That's acetic acid. In one liter flask, so they tell us tell us moles, and also moles, and volume. So they allow us to calculate molarity in concentration. Point eight six mole of ether was formed at room temperature. What is the value of the equilibrium constant K C? Okay, so in this case, you have to set up a nice table. So let's go to the next page. Let's go to the next page. So let's write the chemical reaction C two H five O H. This is uh, let we have to check phase aqueous, 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 and then water. You can ignore water. Water is pure, uh, pure liquid, so you can ignore. So reacting with CH three COOH and then back and forth, they form CH three COOC two H five. Okay, so let's check ice table. Ice table. At the beginning, you have one mole of ethanol divided by liters. Liters is one liters, so molarity is one. And then for acetic acid, is two mole divided by one liters. Okay, and then you have nothing for this one. And then the change is on the product side is going to increase by x moles, and then on the reactant side is going to decrease. It's one to one to one ratio, okay. And then at the end, at the end at chemical equilibrium, they said point eight six moles of ether. So this guy is point eight six point eight six. This is moles divided by one liter. Of course, this is your、uh, final concentration at chemical equilibrium. So basically, this point eight six is your x. This is your x value. Okay. So you can add or you can apply this x values to the、uh, acid and、uh, the ethanol as well. So here is one minus point eight six. This is two minus point eight six. So Kc value can be calculated. Kc can be calculated. It is a、uh, point. Uh, you better write the chemical name by definition first. Definition with chemical name first, but since this screen is a little bit small. So I plug in the value right away. Okay, so it's point eight six to the power one divided by one minus point eight six multiply concentration of、uh, acetic acid two minus point eight six. So basically, that's it for this question. Okay, that's it for this question. You can calculate it to be five point. Three nine, close to five point four. So it's answer D. It's your answer D. Question number seventeen. Ammonium carbamate can dissociate into gases at twenty five degrees C according to the following chemical reaction. If sufficient ammonium carb、uh, carbamate is sealed in a flask. The total pressure will be point one one seven point one one seven atm at chemical equilibrium. What will be the value of Kp? They gave us the partial vapor pressure, and then they ask us to calculate it Kp values. So let's work it out. Let's work it out. Write the chemical reaction equations in H two C O O and H four. Okay. And then this is your solid. Pay attention to phase. So back and forth. 
two ammonium two ammonia this is gas gas plus one CO2 this is also gas okay we have to use IC the ice table here the beginning one the reactant is a solid so it won't affect the chemical equilibrium doesn't matter whether it increase the size of the solid or decrease the size of the solid so you can ignore this term we only care about ammonia and CO2 on the right hand side at the beginning there's nothing so zero zero is for the beginning and then after the chemical reaction starts basically if you assume there is an x mole increment for carbon dioxide there will be two times increment for ammonium ammonia so it will be plus 2x plus 2x and then the final equilibrated passive vapor pressure is 2x for ammonia and then x for CO2 they tell us all of the gases are in a sealed flask and then with a partial vapor pressure of 0.117 what does it mean? that means the final addition of the gas partial vapor pressure that's 2x plus x 2x is for ammonia x is for CO2 the total partial vapor pressure should be equal to 0.117 ATM ATM so we can calculate it. This is basically 3x. So we can calculate it. x equals to 0.117 divided by 3 equals to 0 0.039 atm. Okay? And then, of course, 2x is 0 0.078. So the partial vapor pressure for carbon dioxide is 0 0.039 and then the partial vapor pressure for ammonia is point this is 2x if we calculate 2x is 0 0.078 that's the partial vapor pressure for ammonia so let's write the Kp definition Kp is basically partial vapor pressure of ammonia to the power 2 the coefficient is 2 multiply partial vapor pressure of CO2 to the power 1 divided by reactant partial vapor pressure since the value since the chemical is a solid so you ignore all the values 1 okay let's plug in the value so partial vapor pressure for ammonia is 2x okay remember it is 2x it is 0 0.078 to the power 2 multiply partial vapor pressure for carbon dioxide is 0 0.039 divided by 1 and then equals to 2.37 2.37 multiply 10 to the power negative 4 and uh, if you check your answer keys this is your answer D this is your answer D question number 18 gases hydrogen bromide that's your reactant decomposes at elevated temperature according to the following uh, equally equation the chemical reaction is given to us at a given temperature a two liter flask was initially filled with only only with 0.6 moles of HBr okay hydrogen uh, bromide what is the value what is the value of let's see number 18 what is the value at the temperature if the flask contains 0.104 moles of hydrogen at chemical equilibrium basically they ask us to calculate it kc they ask us to calculate ac some of the wording here is gone some of the wording here is uh is being emitted and it's not being written out correct what's the value of what's the value here okay so we write the chemical reaction equation again and then we have to set up the ice table at the beginning let's consider this chemical e uh, equation and then we have the ICE put it here at the beginning they tell us the hydrogen bromide is point six moles and then the volume is two liters so beginning concentration is 0 0.6 uh, 
divided by 2. Okay, it's 0.3. And then 0 for hydrogen, 0 for bromine. There's nothing. There's nothing. Okay? The ratio, molar ratio, is 2 moles for HBr, and then 1 mole for hydrogen, 1 mole for bromine. And then, of course, on the product side, the change is positive x, the positive x for hydrogen and bromine. The change for the reactant is minus 2x because the molar ratio is 2. At the end of the chemical reaction, they tell us, they tell us the chemical uh, the chemical H2, hydrogen. At the chemical equilibrium, the hydrogen concentration is 0 0.104. So here is 0 0.104 moles. What's the volume? You have to divide it by 2. Don't forget the uh, volume, okay? We need to calculate concentration. So basically, x equals to 0 0.04. 0 0.052, okay? So you can put here 0 0.052 for bromine, of course. And here on the reactant side is 0 0.3. Here is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 minus 2x. 2x is basically 0 0.104, 0 0.104, okay? So you have all of the components. Let's write Kc values. Kc equals to hydrogen iron concentration at chemical equilibrium to the power 1 multiply bromine concentration to the power 1 divided by reactant concentration, HBr concentration to the power 2 because the coefficient is 2. And then let's plug in the values, okay? The value for the hydrogen concentration is 0 0.052 multiply 0 0.052 divided by, it is 0.3 minus 0.104. Remember, you have to raise the power to 2. Okay? And then at this time, you can calculate the value, the final value, 7.04 multiply 10 to the power negative 2. And then it is your answer, B. Okay, so let's stop here.